Hello, this is the second video in the series and in this video we are looking at how to program the DIY BMS. We'll also look at the new features being released at the same time as this video. So let's start by taking a look at the new user interface. The most obvious difference uh, you'll notice is the colours have changed. It's now using a dark theme. Uh, this seems quite popular when I mention it on the forum. Um, on the screen now is my uh, test environment and uh, it's got lots of badly uh, misaligned unbalanced cells. Um, you can see the red ones are actually in balance at the moment. There's been a lot of uh, performance improvements behind the scenes and bug fixes as well. On the home page the bar graph is more responsive and automatically scales for different screen sizes and devices. When a module is balancing you, you can now see the level it's balancing at between 0 and 100%, 100% um, represented by these little squares here. So this one's actually doing 92% at the moment, this one's 100 and that's based on the uh, temperature. Over on the modules page, the global settings uh, now apply to every single bank um, on the system. And also when you're configuring a module, it's much quicker without the annoying five second wait between clicks. So everything just appears straight away. Um, you also get to see the balancing um, level between zero and 100 on um, the screen as well. The integration pages look similar to before, but you can now specify an MQTT topic if you need to run multiple controllers. Thanks to uh, Nick, also known as Hot Ear, for submitting this change. Um, there are several other improvements under the covers to the MQTT code. The settings page has the new styling and a couple of new rules for monitoring external temperature of the cells. You can use these rules to prevent the cells from charging in hot or cold weather. Finally, the About page, this now reports what platform you're running the controller on. In this case, ESP8266. There is experimental support for ESP32 devices, but we'll come on to that later. Now it's time to look at uh, programming the DIY BMS. So before we do that, you're going to need to install some software on your computer. Visual Studio Code and the Platform IO extension are both uh, needed. If you follow the links that you've got on screen here, and just follow the default uh, installation instructions. It's pretty straightforward to do. You will also need to uh, have the DIY BMS version 4 cell modules. These are probably what you've already ordered from JLC PCB. If you look at the previous video to that, it'll tell you all about how to order those. If you've got version uh, 4 or 4.21, that's perfectly all right. You're also going to need some cables to uh, connect those together. You're going to need the controller and its circuit board. The main heart of the controller is the ESP8266. Um, in this uh, case, we're using the uh, WeMOS D1 Mini or the Pro version of that. Either of those will work fine. Um, and also the relay board, if you're going to use that as well. Um, although th that's not mandatory. Let's jump straight in. Open a web browser and go to the GitHub link shown on screen. Click the green button and then the clipboard icon to copy the repository URL to the clipboard. Now if we launch Visual Studio Code, after a few seconds the platform I.O. extension should automatically load and the uh, little alien head or ant head symbol should appear in the toolbar on the left. We're now going to use the built-in Visual Studio commands to clone the DIY BMS source code from GitHub. Click the view menu and select command palette. Now type in git clone. We're now going to paste in the GitHub URL that we already have on the clipboard and then press enter to confirm. You'll be asked to select a folder on your computer to use and then the repository will be copied to your local computer. Now we use the VS Code option open workspace and we browse to the folder on your local computer again and open the workspace. And now you should see the four folders with the source code in them. Okay then, so let's uh, start by programming the ESP controller. I'm using a Wemos D1 Mini Pro. Um, it has a, a connection here for the external antenna, but if you uh, want to use this, you'll need to remove a service, service mount resistor link on the top of the PCB. Uh, I didn't bother for, for mine, it's, uh, the reception's been fine on it. When you buy this board, it will also need to have the header pins manually soldered on, but these should come with the board. For programming, all we're going to do is to connect the board to your computer using a micro USB cable. At this time, don't connect the WeMOS to the DIY BMS controller circuit board. So now we've got the ESP controller connected to your computer by the USB cable. Uh, I'm back in Visual Studio Code. 
we're going to go to the ESP controller code here and the platform io.ini. Just click on that to open it, open it up. Um, and all we need to do then is go to the um, little platform IO icon and click it. And you'll see that there's two options here, um, ESP8266 and the Mini32. Ignore the Mini32 for now. Um, it's the ESP8266 we want. Expanding that out. And we're just going to click on Upload. Now Platform IO will go away and download all the dependencies it needs to build the code. Uh, it'll take a few seconds while it compiles it all up. And then once it's done that, it will automatically define the ESP controller and program it through for you. And that's done. So it took 16 seconds. And the second part of this, which is different to uh, the old source code, um, you will also now need to do the upload file system image. So again, you just click on that and Platform.io does all the work for you. And it's done. So that's actually the controller board program now. So um, that's all done. You can now disconnect um, the controller from the USB cable. So now we'll program the DIY BMS modules. If you've ordered them from JLC PCB, uh, then you'll need to make sure that you're sold it on the at tiny chip, uh, which is the uh, 8 pin chip in the middle of this, this picture um, and also the sockets, the JST sockets, the uh, three white sockets you can see here. Um, the uh, yellow part is actually the uh, 6 pin programming header which you'll also need. You're also going to need a uh, USB ASP or similar um, at tiny programmer. You can get these off Amazon. Um, you can ignore all the wires in this uh, diagram, it's just so I can uh, program them a bit easier. So back to Visual Studio Code. Uh, we're going to move away from the ESP controller and open up the at tiny cell module project and the platform IO file again and once again we'll look at the build options in platform IO uh, this one you'll see there's uh, a lot more items so uh, you'll need to select the right version for your board so version 4 4.1 4.2 or 4.2 with the uh, swapped thermistor over um, so that's R19 and R20 if you swap those um, and 4.21 which is the latest one from JLC then you simply just click on upload and wait for the uh, programmer to do its job you'll see the uh, blue and green uh, LED lights flashing on the module as it's programming and this takes about a minute but uh, I'll fast forward it through here And that's it done. Now you'll just need to repeat that process for each of the modules that you've got. That's all for this video. I hope you found that useful. Uh, on screen now is a forum link uh, where you can ask questions if you've got any problems, that sort of stuff. Um, and as usual, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.